All right. Let's review the Unit 6 practice test. So yesterday, you got the Unit 6 practice test. You could have um, done it on paper, or you could have done it via Edge Elastic. And today, we are going to review that practice test problem by problem. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you the answers. That way you can check and see how you did, see what you got right, and see what you got wrong. Then, once you see all the answers, I'm going to go through problem by problem and explain each problem. And you can fast forward, rewind, um, pause, do whatever you need to do to see um, the explanation for each problem. Alright, so there were the first 10 problems, and you could pause at any moment or rewind if you need to see any of those answers. And then finally, Here's the answers to 11 through 17. You might have already seen how you did on Edge Elastic if it gave you a score or not, but here is your opportunity to see what the answers should have looked like for you. Okay, so now, maybe that was all of this video that you need to watch, or maybe you need to stay tuned because there might be a problem or two or three or I don't know how many that you missed that we need to talk about. So. Let's just start at the beginning, and we're going to go over each problem, number 1 through 17. Like I said, if you don't need to hear an explanation of number 1, you can skip ahead and fast forward in this video, and that's totally fine. Pause, rewind, do whatever you need to do. Before we go problem by problem, I do want you to remember that most of the problems in Unit 6 dealing with exponents can be done one of two ways. You can do these using the shortcuts that we learned, aka the exponent laws that we learned. Or, if you don't remember the shortcuts, when in doubt, what can you always do? You can always write it out. So for number one, if you really needed to, you could, when in doubt, write it out this because you know that when something is to the power of 3, it's repeated multiplication. So it's really just negative 5 times negative 5 times negative 5. Before I even know what the answer is, I know that a negative times a negative times a negative is going to be really like a positive times a negative, which is a negative. And 5 times 5 times 5 comes out to 125. So boom, there's my answer. Number 2, using exponents. What's the simplified form? of all of this. So we're going to take it piece by piece on this one. First, what's 20 divided by 4? 5. Then we have to deal with the exponents on the other part. n to the 15 over n to the 5th. Could I, when in doubt, write it out? And then could I? Nah, I could. But hopefully you know by now that what we do with the 15 and the 5 is we subtract. So what's 15 minus 5? 10. Good. <clears throat> Number 3. How could we simplify this and rewrite it using exponents? What do we do in there's parentheses? With the exponents, we multiply them. So that would be x to the 8 times 4 and y to the 3 times 4. Easy when you know the shortcuts. Now again, could you, when in doubt, write it out on this and write x8, y3? x8, y3. x8, y3. x8, y3. And then count up how many x's you have. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 15 16, 17. Right? You could count them all up, and that would get you to your answer, too. So in an emergency, you can always, when in doubt, write it out yourself to any of these answers anytime. Now, on number four, we need to understand negative exponents. And what was the deal with negative exponents? Negative exponents mean powers in denominators. So is this six times six? Yes, but it's six squared where? in the denominator, in the denominator. Now, we know 
that that would come out to 1 over 36, right? Because 6 squared is 36. But it did say rewritten using a positive exponent. So we want to choose the version that has a positive exponent in it. And it's a positive exponent in the denominator for that problem. All right, then number five is going to be a scientific notation problem. The Taj Mahal crown, which is really just a made up thing. I don't think there actually exists such a thing as the Taj Mahal crown, but hey, whatever. What is this number in scientific notation? We know scientific notation is always something, point something, times 10 to the something. So in this case, it's gonna be 3.5, and we just have to figure out what the exponent on the 10 is. So is it 3.5 hundreds? Is it 3.5 thousands? Is it 3.5 tens of thousands? How do you know? You just count one, two, three, four, and that's your exponent, boom. Hopefully, by now we've got scientific notation down pretty well. All right, then back to some exponent stuff, some multiplication. If you went and out, write it out this, that's 8 times a times a times a times negative 2 times a. So 8 times negative 2 is negative 16. And then that's a to the fourth. Yay. On number 7, something interesting happens. Notice you've got y to the negative 2 and y to the negative 2. That's going to be y to the what? Well, what do we do with the negative 2 and the negative 2? You subtract. So what is negative 2 minus negative 2? Well, anything minus itself is 0, isn't it? So wait, what's y to the 0? Oh, wait, isn't y to the negative 2 divided by itself going to just cancel out? So then what do we have as our answer? Well, we've got z to the 8th, but where is the z to the 8th? It's in the denominator. What do we put in the numerator? We put that placeholder of 1. What else could we have done to write this? We could have called that z to the what? If it's 8 in the denominator, we could call it z to the negative 8. Either one of those answers would be acceptable for this problem. All right, number 8 and number 9, we're skipping on this version of the test. The version uh, that you got should have had those either crossed out or it wasn't even on the edge elastic test because we're not going to worry about that. We're just going to stick to the essentials that we really need to know for high school next year. Number eight, the real now number eight, is evaluate. What does it mean to evaluate? Find the value of what this comes out to when you do the math. So a squared is really five squared minus b cubed, and b cubed is really negative 2 cubed. So what's 5 squared? 25. What's negative 2 cubed? Negative 8, but it's minus negative 8. And what do we do when you have minus minus? If it was Mrs. Levitt, I think she would say something about dinging and donging. I don't know how that works, but the answer comes out to 33. Okay, number 9. Simplify this. Well, if you got negative 8 times x times x times x times x times 5 times x times x, what do you got? Negative 8 times 5 is negative 40. And how many x's do you got? x to the 6th power. Anybody 100% so far? Hope so. Let's see if we can keep it alive. Negative 6 to the third power in simplest form. What's the simplest way to write that? Well, we could write it like this. But is that the simplest way to write it? Probably the simplest way to write it is just to find out what this comes out to. So 6 times 6 times 6 is 216. And a negative times a negative times a negative is going to be a positive times a negative, which is a negative. So our answer is negative, negative 216. That's the simplest way to write that expression. Okay, that's 1 through 10. Let's try the rest. Standard notation. So if we've got this, and we want to put it in standard notation, is this number right here a really big number? Or is it a really small number? We can tell by that negative exponent that it is a really small number. 
So that means when I move this decimal two spots, am I going to move it this way or this way? Well, if I moved it to the right, I would get 514. Is that a really small number? No. If I moved it to the left, that's going to become a small number, and that's the ticket. So I'm going to move it once, twice, so it's going to be 0 0.0514 is going to be your answer for that one. All right. If you really needed to, you could when in doubt write it out on this one, because do we know what 10 to the negative 2 power is? Yes, it's 1 over 10 squared. It's 1 one hundredth. So you could do 5.14 times 1 one hundredth, and that would give you this if you needed to do it on your calculator as well. All right. What do negative exponents mean? They mean powers and denominators, but what if it's already in the denominator? That means it's going to flip, and it's going to become a regular 8 squared, not in the denominator anymore. It has been liberated from the denominator. This is just 8 squared, but it says evaluate. So what's the value of 8 squared? The best way to write this answer would be 64. Let's evaluate it and give the final answer. All right, number 13, find this. 3 to the 9th over 3 to the 6. Okay, if I went and out, write it out, it, that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 threes over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 threes. And now I can match and scratch. I've got that matches, that matches, match, scratch, match, scratch, match, scratch, until I can't anymore. What do I have left? 3 to the third power is going to be my answer. Or, or you could actually finish the problem. What is 3 times 3 times 3? 27. Now, could we have known that without having to do all of this and when in doubt write it out it? Yeah, because we just subtract the exponents in this situation, so we would know that 9 minus 6 is 3. I always like to when in doubt write it out it sometimes because it's helpful to make sure that we get it exactly right. Okay, on number 14, when I do my 17 minus 27, what am I going to have? x to the, uh-oh, uh-oh, negative 10. So that means we could write it that way, or we could write it x to the 10th in the denominator like that. Could you win and out write it out it on there? Yeah, you're going to be writing a lot of x's and doing a lot of matching and scratching. But go for it if you need to. Number 15. What is this to the zero power? Oh, wait a second. What's anything to the zero power? Freebie. All you got to do is remember the rule. Anything to the power of zero is always going to come out to one every time. All right, just two more problems, and they're both scientific notation, standard notation type problems. So, 9.8 times 10 to the 6th, big or small? This one is a really big number because the exponent here. So where am I going to move this to make this a bigger number? Not that way. That would make it 0. 0.00 something 9. I'm going to move it this way. How many times? 1. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. When I write my answer here, in writing, it's always nice to put in the commas. And when you put in the commas, we can see that this is 9,800,000. Just one more, and we are all done and set. We've got ourselves a really small number. So I know this is going to be something, point something, times 10 to the negative something, because it's a really small number. The something point something is going to be 1.23, because you always just have one digit in front of the decimal when you write it in scientific notation. And what's our exponent going to be? Well, the decimal was here, and it ended up here. 
How far did it have to go backwards? It went backwards one, two, three, four. It went backwards five. So my exponent is minus five. And that's how I get my answer of 1.23 times 10 to the negative five. All right, everybody. Hopefully that helped. And that's all I've got to say. Tomorrow, you're going to be trying this out on Edge Elastic. to see how good you are at exponents and unit six stuff.